We're being recorded. And it is three minutes past the hour. I suggest we get started. So welcome everyone. This is the ITF Lake Working Group meeting. My name is Malisha Wuchnit and my co-chair is Stephen Farrell. Uh, hi, Stephen. Uh, so today we are meeting for one hour. Uh, we please note the note well. This is an ITF meeting, so the ITF policy is apply. Uh, the meeting is recorded and the presence is logged. Please put your name on the list uh, in the note in the notepad in case it is not already there. For now, we have two, four, six, six persons uh, uh, logged, uh, but uh, I suppose we are more here in uh, in WebEx. So the uh, the first item on the agenda is the ag administrative and agenda bash for today. So here is the proposed agenda. Uh, first, we will go through the updates uh, to the draft 16 of ad hoc. Uh, Joran or John will be presenting those. Then we will have a short update by Marco on the uh, progress of the traces draft. We will be discussing the remaining issues of ad hoc, uh, getting ready for the working group last call mainly. Uh, does anyone want to bash this agenda? Well, uh, Malisha, this is Yoran. Yes. Um, in the slides, we grouped together the, um, the description of version 16 and the remaining issues. We can break okay. it up as you like, or we can do them in sequence. Oh, uh, okay. So I can say stop when we reach the end of the description of this. Okay. So should we stick? So maybe let's stick to this. Have that, and then towards the end of the meeting, we have the discussion of the remaining issues. To so essentially, we kind of pause in the middle there. Is that okay? Yeah. Fine. All right. So, so with that, I propose we get started with the first, I guess nobody else uh, had any remarks on the agenda. So I propose we get started with the first item uh, that is the ad hoc 16 uh, progress. So Joran, will you be presenting or? I, I can start and John, okay. you, can, you can fill in if you like. That sounds That's good. Okay. That sounds good, okay. All right. So, uh, in this uh, sequel of beautiful lakes, we have finally reached uh, Ireland. And this is, uh, I don't know if it's the upper or lower lake, uh, Stephen, or Glendalough. But anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> one, I don't know either. So. Okay. Well, one of the two, anyway. <laughs> um, so, now, next, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, so, we, we submitted version 16 last, uh, last week. And we have a few remaining issues to be discussed later, but this is about version 16. So next slide, please. Next slide. And the main changes, there has not been much changes. The main changes were um, the result of the security analysis as we discussed in uh, ITF 114. So there is now a change in the salt in the derivation of, of the first pseudo random key. Uh, that we use for key derivation, and instead of the empty string, uh, I'll, I'll show more. This bold face, there is there are extra slides. I'll talk more about those in in separate slides. Uh, second point is about including uh, the credential uh, in the transcript hash. So we previously had the identifier of the credential, but not the credential itself. And there is an extra slide on that. So those are the main ch changes, and then there are some minor changes. Um, so this is just for 
uh, to avoid potential confusion, we have different new names on, on label. There were multiple labels in the document, and now we have tried to give them unique names. There is a new appendix for handling large message two, uh, which we talked about in, in IKF 113. Now there is a, uh, it's actually described in detail, and there's a separate slide on that, uh, which also required a change of a type. Uh, the info label type is changed to int instead of uint. Um, and not much else. There is an implementation note on on bit string identity, uh, sort of bit, byte string integer, how you handle those identifiers, uh, which um, was requested. Some clarifications also requested on on the compact uh, representation uh, of elliptic curves, points on elliptic curves. The bug fix, some updated security considerations, uh, minor changes, and some updated references. So let's dig into the three uh, main or the three big changes. And well, big, big. Next, next slide, please. Um, it's not a big, huge change. Uh, Marek said he did them in, in five minutes. Um, so, so it's not a big thing, but it's still changing the wire format. Uh, so here is the definition of the of PRK2E, and we used to have the zero length byte string as input and proposed by Col uh, Normal Supérieur and uh, David and Baptiste who made the review is that we could, could bind this more tighter to the actual exchange and instead include the transcript hash two in as the salt. And that also simplified the description very nicely. So, so we, we actually, we, um, we are very happy with this proposal and it's included now. And there's more detail in issue 299. So that's the first change uh, of the wire format. The next slide is the second change. And this was proposed by, by ETH Zurich, Felix Günther and Mark Ilunga, um, who in their analysis wanted to make uh, explicit the, the identity of the peers and in particular the credential. So to simply, and that, that was, uh, good for in their analysis to simplify the agreement on the communication peer. So there is already the ID cred included in the plain text, but the actual credential was not included in the transcript hash. And that's the change made here. Uh, so it's the credential of the responder and credential of the initiator. More details in issue number 317. And those were the main uh, changes which broke the format and then we had the, the final optional change in the next slide on the how to handle large message two. So um, Eric Tormarke noted that the, the size of message two is actually limited by the construction of, of the encryption. So, so if you remember uh, ciphertext two is defined as the XOR plain text uh, message with the keystream, where the keystream is derived with the KDF defined in terms of expand uh, and expand depending on hash function. Uh, it, so it, it depends on the hash function and in particular for HDF expand, uh, the limit uh, of the output is uh, 255 times uh, the length of the hash. So it's the size of a number of bits times uh, in, in sort of eight bytes times uh, the size of the hash, which is uh, eight kilobytes approximately. And it's not a major restriction. And uh, it was not really considered that we actually should do anything about it, but to avoid a necessary restriction, we propose to include an optional solution, how to handle large message two in case you have those. And that's the one described here. We, we mentioned it as one was the main candidate last meeting. And in principle, you divide, I mean, it, it's explained here actually. So um, you divide the plain text into uh, chunks of size, uh, which are less than the maximum, which are sort of the, the less, less than the maximum value or, or equal to the maximum value. And uh, then you define a key stream 
in an analog way, and this key stream is then defined using ad hoc KDF. And, and the, um, the different chunks, the index for the different chunk is the label, uh, at least the negative label used uh, in the key derivation function. So in particular for, for when this is reduces to the, to the case of just the chunk is just P of zero equals P of last, then keystream two, uh, then you have the label zero, and then it coincides with the definition that we have in the body of the of the document. So that's an optional way of optional solution, but it's now specified if someone wants to uh, have a solution for that case. And that is the end of the. Uh, I think the next slide is yes, remaining issues. So any questions on this or comments? Okay. Yeah, I hear no questions. Yes, so I propose we go on with Marco's slot before coming back to the remaining issues. Sounds good to me. Okay, uh, it's a very quick update of uh, the ongoing work uh, on the traces towards the next version. Next slide, please. Yeah, we in fact have uh, new traces. They are now available on the working group GitHub. You can find uh, the PR337 out of the branch traces 03, uh, where the actual traces uh, have been compiled. So I made those um, out of the um, Java implementation for Eclipse California that I updated and is now aligned uh, with version 16 uh, of EDOC. Uh, so to be fair, a number of things uh, remain that changed, of course. So everything that is about the actual um, uh, test vector setup, so to say, so all the credentials, the corresponding identifiers, the ephemeral keys, uh, the two peers identifiers, uh, and then the whole ad hoc message too, including it, its component and preparation. And uh, the first phase uh, of the preparation of ad hoc message too, I think um, up and including uh, the computing of th2 and gxy. Uh, that's supposed to be uh, unchanged. Uh, next slide, please. But yeah, anything else uh, really uh, changes. And the trigger is really about the, uh, the things that Joran showed in, in his presentation before. So the computing of prk, qe, uh, th3, and th4. Uh, they basically result in a change um, on anything else. Um, so the, the traces are available on the GitHub, uh, bottom line. Uh, I would really appreciate early feedback uh, on those. And I know other people are updating their implementations. Um, in parallel, uh, I, I would like to run some interrupt tests. Uh, I have Marek in mind and possibly other people um, uh, currently working on their implementation. That can happen in, in the next few weeks uh, and or uh, in London where um, uh, I'll attend uh, in presence. Uh, yeah, around that time, right after, um, we also need, I believe, to very carefully uh, check those traces and then bite by bite <laughs> to be sure they are absolutely correct. Um, when we are done with that, I think we can merge the pull request, go for version three, and if the main protocol doesn't change anymore, um, apart from editorial fixes, uh, we may have a final version of the of the traces document. And this was my last slide, actually. Thank you, Marco. So maybe just a quick question from me. Could you comment on the status of the implementations, uh, of the different implementations? How many do we have right now that are aligned? Uh, has anyone reached out to you from? from... Mm, no, not directly. I, I think Marek should be done. But I'm not 100% sure. I think he is compiling test vectors also on his own, but I, I don't have an official confirmation. Okay, okay. I have a comment there. So I think Marek actually updated the the GitHub with the test vector, the certificate, certificate based test vectors, which they are using. So uh, I don't know if you can, what's easiest if you you run Marek's <laughs> test cases and or he runs the traces document test cases. I, 
but uh, or if you just interrupt directly with each other but yeah think... th that'd be great as soon as it's available we can do right okay yeah and on my side i'm also working on the implementation uh, on extending the rust implementation with uh, to support the responder role so hopefully my implementation will be ready for for the london time time frame for interrupt testing looking forward yes that's great all right do we have any other questions i hear none i propose we get back to the remaining issues then joran okay right so next slide please so in the tracker we have both the the issues related to the ad hoc document and the test vectors and traces and these are if i'm i haven't looked today but this was yesterday evening this was the list of issues related to the, the ad hoc document so i'd like to go through them now and and have a proposal for how to handle them. And that we don't take them in order, just to confuse things. So we, we start with the most important stuff, which is number 324. Well, next slide, we, we, go, we go through them all. Um, and again, John, just feel free to interrupt me uh, at any time. So we have had contacts with people from from ENS I mentioned that's the sort of the, the fourth security review and uh, we don't know any others so fourth and final for, for this round of security reviews uh, and they have been working on uh, increasing the security against online attacks in addition to their previous contributions so uh, there's been a long-standing assumption in Lake uh, which has been sort of in the, in the document for 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 one and a half years, and it's been the assumption uh, essentially from the start is that ad hoc needs at least 128 bit security against offline attacks, and 64 bits at least 64 bit security against online attacks. And obviously, with with uh, depending on the cipher suite, you could you could you could um, increase that, but this should be the minimum levels. And they have been working at ENS on trying to increment that. So they have proposed uh, in issue 324, and there's a PR 325, who discuss a change to the key schedule related to message three. And without going into the details of that, it 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 addressed the uh, online attack. It increased the online attack security but it also rendered some problems uh, with identity protection against active attackers and opening up for side channel attacks. Uh, and for that reason, this was commented by several, by other reviewers and by other implementers saying that we don't think this is a, a good trade-off. So, uh, so we had a meeting with them uh, this week and um, the same result that they try to do with this change of the key schedule can actually be achieved with verification of several Macs. So and that's uh, uh, now uh, documented as a new issue, issue 340. And what they show uh, is that you can use, you, you get the strength of combined Macs in, in messages two and four, and also would be in message three and other uh, messages going in the same direction. And, and, and that, uh, that's a very nice result, uh, which is not necessary for, for the most constrained cases, but it's nice to know that you can actually uh, achieve this theoretical property. Uh, in particular, uh, this is very nice in, in the case of, of combined delivery of OSCOR and, and ad hoc, which is in this draft, uh, ITF core ad, OSCOR ad hoc, where uh, the OSCOR request contains ad hoc message three. So that flight actually contains the two max, which gives you the higher security, uh, provided that you make, uh, that you verify both and that you terminate ad hoc in case the OSCOR MAC fails. 
So, I mean, you, you obviously ter ter terminate ad hoc if the ad hoc MAC fails, but also if the OSCOR MAC fails. So what's missing here, uh, we think, uh, is the security consideration describing exactly, or at least uh, give some example of how to increase the security against uh, this, this theoretical online attacks. So that's, uh, that's the proposal that to resolve this is that we, we don't go in the direction the first direction proposed by ENS uh, with issue 324 and 325, and instead uh, we go in the direction of issue 340 and make a PR to describe how this, how this proof falls out in the case of using OSCOR uh, or using a fourth message. Yeah, so, so no technical changes, just that the situation is better than um, than the current ad doc document gives uh, states. Um, and for if message four is replaced by a OSCOR message, you would have to have additional requirement on that so that you terminate and redo ad hoc if the Mac fails. That would not be normal behavior in OSCOR. It would be normal behavior for the OSCOR ad hoc draft when you send message three, but it would not be for, for a application layer protocol replacing message four. Um, um, but yeah, no, we don't think anything needed beyond 64 is really needed for the most constrained cases, but it's nice that they might uh, get that anyway. They might get 128. And of course, this is, has nothing to do with 124. If you use larger max, they would also add up. Is this, are there any questions around this or is this clear? So there seems to be Steven, uh, Sorry. Who wants to ask a question. Steven, did you have a question or? Okay, we lost him. I saw him for a moment, but uh, yeah, maybe we can come back to that later. Uh, so just as a clarification to, to make sure I understand this correctly, uh, mm -hmm. essentially if message four and message, message four is used, which is an optional message, the uh, the security level that uh, the handshake results in is 128 bits because there are two the, because these two max are correlated. Is that correct? Uh, so that's I mean there are multiple ways of defining 128 bits. Mm -hmm. So this is that would be 128 bits against online attacks. Against which... online, yes, that that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, or more generally, it would be the sum of the message two and message four. Yeah, having 64 byte max is just a special case. 64 bit max. 64, okay. And yeah, the same then applies if the uh, if the OSCOR message is piggybacked uh, on top of ad hoc, ad hoc message three. So this seems to be a very nice result on their behalf. So. Yes, that's that's yeah. that's the conclusion here. Yeah. That yeah. we actually yeah. don't. We, we we essentially change. I mean, we change something in in the processing on OSCOR messages, but we get this this property thanks to their their proof here. So that's very nice. And um, of course, the same thing applies to if you don't piggyback. Uh, the same would apply for message three and uh, application layer message five, as long as you. You term redo ad hoc if you get the Mac failure on that application protocol message five. So I think I fixed my audio now. Is is it coming through? Yes. 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 Good. Uh, okay. So I mean, this is a nice nice change and a uh, kudos to whoever thought of it. Um, in the text you're going to propose, I'm guessing there could be kind of a layering violation in the implementation of this, right? So. How did you? What way are you going to cast it? Are you going to kind of recommend doing this check, or say if if your implementation allows visibility to all the right things, you could do this check and get this property? Or what way were you going to kind of cast it? I I think not recommend doing it because I don't know. You might be perfectly fine with sixty four bit 
uh, or you might use another cipher suit you get 128 so i my current thinking is more like phrasing it as if you do this you like some things you don't need to any do any change you then just a like you get these uh, properties and then if you do this change to the application protocol or you um, use this OSCORE ad hoc, then you get these additional properties. Okay, uh, I think that's right. Yeah, so I just wanted to check you weren't going to propose recommending it. I think that's probably the right, uh, the right approach. So good. Okay, so unless there are other questions, let's go to the next slide. So here is a fairly recent proposal, which we uh, have made a PR um, um, of, and that's basically the insights that we, uh, that's, this is based on discussions in core as well, in the core working group, um, that we actually don't use the ad hoc key update. Um, this is a nice feature <laughs> and uh, we thought it would be used in, in the kudos, in the key update for OSCORE draft, but they have a similar construction, which um, which actually does the same thing, and uh, they didn't need two constructions, so so they kicked out the ad hoc key update out of that. So we have a uh, a way of of uh, describing how to update keys with forward secrecy. Uh, it's defined in terms of the ad hoc KDF, but we never actually use it uh, in this draft, or we we don't have a. I mean, we have another document where it might be used, like the other profile of ACE, but it's not, it's not actually uh, necessary to, to for, to have an ad hoc and OSCOR implementation and and to do, and uh, the type of key updates you want. To. So the proposal is basically that we move this description, we keep the description, but we move it to an appendix, to reduce the complexity of the core specification, but to keep this this construction available for potential later use. Uh, an alternative is to take it out completely, um, which I suppose is fine too. But we we thought that had we now specified this, we should should um, stash it in some easy to access place, which ended up in in an appendix. That's Com your yeah. Uh, there's a PR for that. Does that remove the should implement key update? Yes. So that's yeah. that, that's important point. That today it actually says it's recommended to up to implement key update, and that's taken out now. So we don't recommend it. It's optional. Or, or we we don't recommend not to do it. We, it's just optional. Comments, Stephen. Yeah, so I think that's okay. I would not delete the text um, because there is BCP 107 kind of calls for people to be able to do things like key updates. And so I think it's a good idea to keep it as an appendix. I think you've taken the right approach. Um, Thanks. Which BCP calls for key updates? BCP 107. It's, it's fairly outdated. It's from 2005, but... Uh, Nonetheless, it's it's useful to be able. If somebody asks you the question later, it's useful to have a good answer. <laughs> Usually, those BCPs you never heard of turn off in the in the in the review process. So it's good to yeah. be prepared. But maybe this would be should I don't know if is there is would be good to confirm on the list. Maybe we could ask on the list if somebody have maybe somebody is using this. I don't know. Um, some of the implementation, or maybe we, you know, that it's not used in heavily in any of the current implementation. Uh, thought um, used. Yeah, I, I haven't. That's a good question. I mean, we, we could we could definitely confirm this on the mailing list. That makes sense to me. Yeah, I think that would be good. But it's not like we change it. it we are moving to our appendix, so it would not change anything. No. Anyway. Um, yeah. So, do you want to confirm this on the mailing list, Yaran? Or uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Put them okay. So let's let's note as an action item for Yaran to to open a thread on this issue on the mailing list. Okay. Then we move to the next slide, please. 
yeah, this is just a uh, the figure saying the same thing, moving uh, the orange box to the appendix. Next slide. Yeah, uh, basically back. Well, would there be any if we completely remove key, key update? Would there be any simplification here in the key? No. If you so, go back, please. Okay. Thank you. So no, no, there, I, there is no change. I mean, this, this is a completely isolated loop here. Uh, the label is eleven, so we wouldn't even miss, miss any labels uh, that we need to explain. Nothing yeah. happens in this picture. And there is always an option of rerunning the ad hoc handshake, right? To... And that's that's I mean that's what we that's actually what we stress here, and that's also what's recommended that you should do frequent uh, ad hoc. <laughs> I mean you should do frequent if Hellman. That's that's the best way to get uh, good uh, good properties of of the uh, of the keys. So that's another reason why this is not the most important component. Yeah. But I guess here is uh, it's hard to give some general recommendation here. It's based how how, how much uh, security you want and how if you want to do a full development or you want to do something more simple like this symmetric forward secrecy that gives uh, sign verse and then how often and so on. So I guess we have to have a I guess current recommendation is to redo it, but I guess we don't give any um, times how often. I guess we leave that to them. Yeah. Yeah, and if I mean, if you do want to make this um, hash of of a secret key for forward secrecy, then you can use kudos for that. So, so there is the option. We are not taking that out. Uh, but we don't we don't specially we don't specifically recommend any intervals. That's that's true. Okay, so let's move on. Next slide. Um, so there are two minor security considerations. Uh, one is which is sort of based on comments by reviewers. One is on the. Uh, the peer awareness text, which needs, which is only talking about three, three messages, so it needs to be updated to include the fourth message, and there is one issue on privacy recommendations for short identifiers. So we need to clarify randomness and unpredictability, and those are, are um, minor updates which we just have haven't done yet, but uh, should should amount um, some small text changes. In, in two paragraphs. I don't know if there's any comment on those. Otherwise, we move on to the next. And this is the final slide of the issues. And there are three different uh, uh, minor, I'd say, or at least not uh, not major. Um, so there is one about, I, I, I proposed we should change the PRK notation, um, but, John uh, um, commented that this actually would may confuse people that they think that message two is protected with PRK two and so on, which is not the case. And that's actually what these indices are telling us. It's uh, PRK three e two m is saying that it's used for the MAC in message two and encryption in message three. So, so we could just keep the notation as we have it. So the proposal there is that we just close this issue. Um, the next issue is on on uh, size of the document. Uh, Stephen opened this a while ago asking if 101 pages is too many words. And uh, now we are in 93 pages. Um, so we've done little progress perhaps, but we have also ex ex uh, um, Put more content in than at the time when there were 101 pages, so we're more more dense now. And if you look at the number of pages excluding IANA security consideration appendixes, we are down to 44 pages, which I suppose should be sufficient, fairly uh, good size for a specification of this kind. Um, so we propose to close that as well. And the final uh, is the 
issue on adding a cipher suite for way 25519 where we still don't have a cozy algorithm for for that and we that that's easy to add later uh, we don't need to include it here this could be done with an ayana action and uh, so we propose to close that too any comments on these three issues No objection. That's good. So we close them. And that, I think, was the last slide on the issues. And then there's just the next steps. So we should fix the remaining issues. I should send up an email. And we should do the, uh, the minor security considerations, submit a new version, and before the cutoff, as soon as possible. And uh, well, are we ready for leaving the working group? Or at least asking people if we are ready to leave the working group. So just as a clarification, in 17, we will essentially be uh, resolving all the open issues on GitHub that are open at the moment. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the proposal. OK. So do we have any comments on, does anyone want to bring any other issues, something that should be discussed before the working group last call i hear none no remarks so essentially with if you are going to uh submit this before the cutoff which is on 24th of this month uh we could, should we launch the working group last call immediately uh, after uh, version 17 is out? This is the question to the people attending the meeting. Any, any opinions? Um, I mean, to be honest, not much has happened now. We've done the security, <laughs> not much is happening right now. There is, we've done mm -hmm. the security reviews. Um, this was the fourth one and we tried to, to accommodate for that. And uh, yeah, I don't see anything happening right now. So and we do accommodate with the pull request to the security, security considerations, right? So, yeah. So we have, I think we have accommodated for mo for vast majority of the reviews that have come in and so that we are kind seems that we are ready for the working group last call steven do you have any opinions on this or are you on mute steven i think steven is having problems with his audio uh Okay, until that is fixed, uh, I propose the plan to stick to the plan that we essentially. Uh, oh, there's a chat, chat message. There is a chat message. Okay, let me read. It says WebEx audio crap. Good for working group last call ending at uh, at the end of ITF 115. Okay, so at the end of ITF 115, so we still have presentation of the updates at ITF 115, uh, final presentation possibly including this. I have a comment. Launch. Yes? Uh, yes, a comment there. Uh, it would be good to have Stephen online here, but it um, we don't have anything to present if there is no... Uh, okay, we could, we could present the, the comments up until the... the uh, the meeting, but it would it would be better to have the working group last call ending before the lake meeting, so we could actually summarize the meeting, uh, the comments in the meeting. Or, yeah, well, it depends. I mean, I think the audio is probably back. Uh, it depends, uh, I guess, on when you post seventeen. So, okay, so if we do it a week, say a week before the cutoff. This is on seventeenth, a little less than two weeks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we give people two weeks like a full two weeks to review, then I think that's fair. Um, so it's just if, if, if you if you only posted on the 24th or 23rd or whatever, then 
we should probably give him give him more time. Okay. If you get it done earlier, then good. Okay. Let's let's add, what do you say, John? Do you think seventeenth uh, is a reasonable? Should be doable. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I think a two week working class call is fine for this, and then we can, if there's issues to discuss in London, we discuss them. If not, we uh, I'll go for beer. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, so the plan is to summarize to submit 17 before uh, October 17th and to launch immediately a two week working group last call, which would end before the start of the ITF meeting. And then essentially to summarize the any open issues during the working group last call during the ITF. Uh, that seems good. Uh, it seems that we all agree on that. Uh, do we have any other comments or should we conclude this meeting? I hear no other comments. Do we have any other business? Uh, so I guess if just nothing, nothing concrete, but uh, if the working group last call is easy and clean and doesn't turn up a whole lot of trouble, which I hope, uh, then if people have some reason they want to recharter, that's probably a good time to start thinking about it. So if, I guess if anybody wants to recharter, then maybe drop a mail to the list in and around between now and London. Okay. Uh, or, or maybe the right thing is to say, we declare victory and we're, we just pro process this document and then close the working group. So whatever people want. We also have the traces document, so we should have working group that's called for that also, which is, but that seems to be also in the close future. Yeah, I mean, I guess as soon as, yeah, I mean, I think as soon as the main document is, you know, is clearly heading towards the publication request, we can just process the traces thing. Mm. Um, and... Okay. So we... All right, so it seems we're all set. Yes, if, yes. if there is no any other business, I propose we conclude the meeting and then we see each other in London in a little less in exactly one month from now. All right, thank you everyone for attending. This was uh, thank you. Fun. Thanks, all. thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Marco, for the notes. So good. Uh, that was that was cool. Forty five minutes past. That's nice. So, okay, uh, is there a button in this thing to, to say publish the minutes yet? <laughs> uh, so let me. Publish yeah, uh, okay. there is a button to import it uh, onto the data to the data tracker, but let me go format them nicely and before I do that, so I can I can take care of that. Okay, all right. If you're happy to do that, great. Because I I just clicked yeah. the button and I got an error in my browser. So. Okay. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. good. If I reload it, maybe it's going to publish them, but we can always update them. Yeah, yeah. I like to do the formatting changes before I yeah. publish them. Yeah. Very but nice. usually okay. they do a really great job. Yeah, okay. I think it's all good. Um, I, I don't mm -hmm. know if anybody wants to reach out or to do more stuff or not. But... So I have a draft. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, we, this is something we can discuss. We have a draft that uses external authorization data. Uh, did you stop the recording? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>